Members of Ottawa's Somali community say Canada needs to do a much better job of protecting them when they travel abroad. This comes as one of their own, Abdi Hakim Mohammed, remains stranded in Kenya. Mohammed is autistic and his mother took him to live with his grandmother in Somalia five years ago. She brought his passport back to Ottawa for safekeeping, but Canadian officials took it away. Following the attention now of the case of Sawad Haji Mohammed, another Somali Canadian stranded in Nairobi, government officials say they will get Abdi Hakim an emergency document, but he and his family continue to wait. Ahmed Hussain is president of the Canadian Somali Congress, and he joins me in the studio. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. So what is happening uh, with Abdi Hakim Mohammed right now? Well, a number of, uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, there were uh, frequent uh, media reports suggesting that uh, his ordeal was uh, coming to an end and that... Uh, there was a resolution to the case. Uh, uh, subsequent to that, we have uh, been waiting with the family to uh, welcome him back to Ottawa, but um, the uh, the High Commission officials had um, a meeting with Abdi Hakim Mohammed uh, last Monday, mm-hmm. and basically um, they had a meeting off the site of the High Commission, and they asked him very formal questions such as what's your name uh, how old are you and um and how long have you been in Nairobi where they whereas they they know how how long he's been there they know who he is and so we found those questions to be odd he asked them uh, when he'll get a passport or a, a document from them and they said that they can't make that decision that that decision is is uh, is a decision that will be made in Ottawa and last but certainly not least for him, he asked them to provide them with a protection letter to protect himself against uh, constantly being harassed by Kenyan police for bribes because he's virtually stateless and the Canadian High Commission would not provide that letter to him. So um, this case doesn't seem to be moving as quickly as we had hoped and um, it's we're going into... I guess the second week and a half from the time of the announcement that they were going to provide a document. We haven't seen one yet. And one of the things that I've learned in this business is that, um, you know, uh, the promise of future action is certainly not a guarantee of anything that will happen. So uh, we have to keep uh, awareness about his case uh, and make sure that uh, they move quickly on this. It's been three years. I cannot, for the life of me, believe why it's taking this long. And uh, it's unacceptable. So does your attention turn now to Ottawa? Is that where you need to focus? And what, if any, conversation have you had with Lawrence Cannon? Uh, we haven't had a conversation with the foreign minister, but what we've done is we've, uh, with the community at large, we've distributed literally uh, thousands of uh, petitions to the community and they've filled it and returned it uh, to their local MPs as well as the ministers that are affected by this. Um, I think there's a larger problem here. Uh, people were were uh, focusing rightly on the Suad Haji Mahmoud case mm-hmm. and uh, noting rightly that uh, it took three months for them to sort out uh, a simple passport dispute. Well, in the case of uh, Abdi Hakim Mohammed, it's even more shocking. It's taking them three years and counting to solve a passport dispute. Apparently his ears were too big. And um, this is a kid who needs care. He needs to come back home to Ottawa. He's a Canadian citizen. And the High Commission there, I don't know what, what, what their problem is, if they're understaffed or if they just don't care. Um, and he offered, he offered to uh, submit to a DNA test. Well, just both, as both his mother and, uh, and both mother and son have, have offered, have, have had that offer on the table. It just, the offer hasn't been taken up by... Uh, and the similarity a, uh, about the pictures, too. In, yeah, in one crazy. case, it was the lips, and in no, this case, it's the ears. Yeah, I know. And, uh, and so that's why we think uh, these cases are not isolated. There is a systemic problem with that high commission. Uh, Canadian Somali Congress has looked beyond these two cases and we want, obviously we want a resolution to the Abdi Hakim case. Mm -hmm. We want a probe of what's going on. Well, yeah, because the government has committed to a probe of the Suad case, but Mm -hmm. we think 
it should be expanded to the the council of services of that high commission what do you believe is happening there because obviously you want that probe because you have uh concerns. intelligence and concerns about what's happening there so what what is it that needs to be probed well on a basic level uh, the high commission its council of services section had a duty of care to two Canadians, Suad Haji Mohammed and uh, Mr. Abdi Hakim Mohammed. In these two cases, they clearly failed in that duty of care. Um, so we don't want to rush to judgment the way High Commission officials rushed to judgment with these individuals and you know, concluded that they're imposters. What we, we think there is a problem, but we want um, that, uh, that probe to bring forth uh, the the extent of the problem and also to bring forth recommendations which we can then push for uh, implementation. We don't want to rush to judgment. But Do you have to travel through Nairobi to go to Somalia? Actually, uh, you bring up a good point. It's not just Somalia. If you want to do anything in East and Central Africa, you're literally forced to go through Nairobi. A lot of people, you know, I've heard people say, you know, why do these people have to go to Nairobi anyway if, if this is the case? Well, if you work for an NGO, if you if you want to do anything in East and Central Africa, the United Nations Environmental Program, it's a huge uh, you know arm of the UN. Their head office is in Nairobi, Kenya. Mm. Uh, a lot of regional UN offices like the UNHCR and World Health Organization and others are based in Nairobi. A lot of media uh, outlets, um, uh, a lot of you know well-known uh, uh, multinational companies. So. Kenya is a very big regional hub, and Nairobi seems to be the, the the place to go through on your way to a lot of countries in the region, and also for consular services. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the high commissions for many countries, including Canada, are based in Nairobi. So you can't really avoid going through that city. You know, you speak about how uh, Abdi Hakim's case was not talked about or discussed. Yeah. Bef- before Suad's, and she, yes. and she got a lot of attention, and she deserved it, as you point out. Are there others we don't know about? There are others, but they're not uh, on the same level of... Uh, 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 they're not in the same uh, spectrum of, um, of like of, of suffering. I mean, the people who've been inconvenienced, there have been literally dozens of cases where people have been uh, forced to pay bribes in order to get in order not to miss their flight. Mm-hmm. Um, there have been folks who have complained regularly about uh, not receiving a, 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 a good standard of care and a good standard of service in the Canadian High Commission in Nairobi. And they hold Canadian passports. And this is not just for uh, Somali Canadians. This mm-hmm. is for everyone. And, have you uh, traveled through and had to deal with Nairobi well, officials? Well, I, I, trav- I went to Kenya uh, six years ago. And I had some difficulties uh, at the border. I was going from Uganda to Kenya because I I visited friends in Uganda. But you know this this sorts of uh, experiences with the uh, corrupt Kenyan system is very regular. We're not surprised by that. What we're surprised is the the very um, lackluster attitude of the uh, folks in the Canadian High Commission in Nairobi. We don't know if it's just. We don't know if it's incompetence, understaffing, lack of finances, or if they just don't care. And mm-hmm. so the the best thing to do is to probe uh, what's going on there, then to come up with recommendations, which can then be uh, which can then be implemented. We don't want to rush to judgment. And just tell me briefly about uh, Abdi Hakim's mother, because it's been yeah. you know she she has her own very real challenges as a result sure. of this. Yeah. Well, uh, she. Uh, she is distraught. She has been waiting and waiting for a really long time. What's disturbing about this case is that um, they keep asking for uh, certain things to be submitted before they provide him with documentation. Whenever she's complied, they ask for new conditions. Mm-hmm. And then they, she complies with those new conditions. Then there's silence for a number of months. Then they ask for the same conditions again. And so on. Um, wh- some of the interesting things about what happened the l- in the last week and a half is the headlines in a lot of media outlets were saying, you know, stranded man to be given documents. But then when you read the article, the conditions that they're uh, asking for are the same as what they've been doing for the last number of years. 
in the last interview that they had with him last Monday, mm-hmm. they still insisted that they have questions about his, his identity. Now, from my vantage point, it, does it take three years to determine either way uh, who, who a person is? Yeah. And Clearly, you think there needs to be direct intervention here to get this done. Yes, yes. and uh, we're hoping that uh, that there's enough pressure that, that will build to move this case. But uh, this points to a bigger problem mm-hmm. than Abdi Hakim and Suad, and we hope that there, these two cases can bring forth changes, much-needed changes to that High Commission. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in.